outbreak of the coronavirus in China, which has created anxiety all over the world. And these viruses are basically, you know, transmitted between animal and uh, people. And perhaps, you know, um, these are the moments we, we need to look at uh, some of the simple Islamic guidelines. When we talk about the food and drink, what is halal, what is haram, there are implications there. And also when we talk about some of the simple rulings that we have as far as, you know, personal hygiene on a daily basis is concerned. Because there are certain things that we do from childhood we have been taught that this is part of, you know, Islamic akhlaq and behavior and this is how you should do, which are good. But sometimes we do not appreciate that until we see the world doing the same thing. Then we say, oh, I've been doing this from my childhood. You know, it was about in the last uh, two decades, there have been different reports that we see from different schools in Canada as well as in US where they instituted this policy where the students were actually asked to wash their hands four or five times during the daytime when they're in the school. And this actually had an impact on reducing Epstein's uh, 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 and, you know, their, their absence from the school because of their illness. For example, if you look at um, the a study which looked at 305 uh, children in Detroit, um, they found that the youngster who washed their hands four or five times a day had 25% fewer sick days due to uh, illness and 51 person fewer days lost because of, you know, stomach upset. Schools in Ohio, Delaware, Tennessee, California, they also actually talked about this issue of hand washing, resulting in 51 person less, you know, absenteeism. And this is, we, we come to realize that, you know, a Muslim, even he or she does not constantly consciously, you know, do this thing just by the fact that they had to do wudu three to five times a day. They go through this process. And this is where we come to realize that, you know, some of these rituals are not just rituals. They have an impact in our uh, daily lives. And especially uh, if you look at the hadith that we have on this issue about washing hands before and after eating. You know, the problem is these days we are so much, you know, used to um, spoon and um, forks that we don't really think about it. But even then, if we just talk about this uh, akhlaq which has come from the masumin. You know, just three or four ahadiths on this issue. One is from beginning from uh, the Prophet of Islam where he says, Ya Ali. Inna al-wudu qabla ta'am wa ba'dahu shifa'un fil jasad. وَيُمْنٌ فِي الرِّزْقِ He says that oh, Ali, doing wudu before the food and after the food. Now here, let me explain this. There are actually four or five hadiths uh, of this type where the word wudu has been used. But our sixth imam, in his conversation with Hisham, he says, وَالْوُضُوْ هَا هُنَا غَسْلُ الْيَدَيْنِ قَبْلَ الطَّعَامِ وَبَعْدُهُ the word wudu here doesn't refer to the ritual wudu. It actually means washing the hands before and after uh, food. And so the, the Prophet says to Ali, Ya Ali, in al wudu qabla ta'am wal ba'duhu, washing hands before and after food, shifa'un fil jasad. This gives, uh, you know, health and it's a healing for the body. Wa yamunnu fil rizq. On a different level, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, blesses the individual as far as their sustenance is concerned by this simple act. Ali himself, he says, Man arada an yakthuru khayra baytihi, fal yaqsil yadahu qabla al-akl. If a person would like to see blessings in his house that they are increased, then he should wash his hand before, you know, food. Abu Hamza Thamali, going to the fifth Imam, 
you know, a very compa uh, you know, famous companion of the Imam, of the fourth and fifth Imam, he says, Ya Aba Hamza, al wudu qabla ta'am wa ba'duhu yudhiban al faqr Washing hands before and after food actually eliminates poverty from the person. Abu Hamza was surprised. Bi Abi wa Ummi yadhabuna bil faqr. They basically, you know, melt away the poverty of the person. Imam said, yes, this is what they do. Abu Auf al Bajali. Of course, you know, remember some of these statements are conditional. It doesn't mean you just do this and don't do anything else. You know, you still have to do your part. As we say, you know, you do your dawa and then you also do your dua. It's not just dua, neither is only dawa. Both goes hand in hand. Abu Auf al Bajali is quoting the sixth Imam who says, Yaqul al Wudu qabla ta'am wal ba'd wa ba'duhu. Yazidan if risk. Again, going back to the statement of the Prophet, that washing hands increases the sustenance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to the person. And so these are very simple things. You know, probably I don't need to even talk about it, but I'm talking about it because sometimes we take things for granted, and this is where we have to look at it. Um, you know, the whole issue these days, where whether do you, you use the mask, you know, you look at the reports and the discussions about the coronavirus. It's not really the mask which is the main thing. It is more the issue of, you know, the hand and washing of the hand, which has been emphasized again and again and again. And this is where, um, you know, we see these kinds of events going on. And of course, we have to take, uh, you know, physical precautions as far as medicine is concerned. You know, listen to the advice of the, those who are uh, the expert in uh, in that field, but of course, you know, we have to also seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said earlier, dawa and dua go hand in hand. It has to be done uh, together. You look at Saif al sajjadiya you know, sometimes people become very worried. What do we do? Very simple. You have this very famous and beautiful book known as Saif al sajjadiya of Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salatu wa salam. It's not a small book, it's not a booklet, it's not a pamphlet. And I said many times, I'm not even asking you to read the whole book. The least that I'm asking you is go and look at the table of contents. At least you know what is in this book. So when the time comes, you know, it will click in your mind, okay, you know, I saw something in the list. Then you go and look for that dua and recite. Dua number 15 of Saif e Sajjadiyya is about this uh, situation of illness and, and sickness. And you will see in, 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 in the um, introductory part of that dua, very beautifully Imam uh, guides us how to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, from both angles of uh, illness and sickness, whether this is for my good, or it is there is something that I can be helped by you. Both elements are there. Uh, and there is praise for both situations. And at the end, you know, there is this uh, dua that, oh Allah, get me out of this uh, illness. Let me taste the sweetness of well-being. Let me taste the coolness of safety. And then it goes on. And of course, as normal imam in all the duas, you know, interjects the salawat on Muhammad and Ali Muhammad as a way of wasila. Salawat, Pranayikbar. You know, these days, because we see quite a lot, you know, inquiries about this issue of dua, what should we, you know, recite? When this um, virus like this are spreading around the world, uh, one of the duas which is very famous among the Shias, and also many, many Sunnis, which came to mind, although I have not yet been able to find the origin of that, is just two lines, songs like poetry, you know, it's also very famous among the Sunnis, where it says, "Li khamsatun utfi biha har al waba al hatima." I'm sure some of you remember it, huh? That I have five, or I believe in five, 
you know, um, through whom I extinguish the heat of crushing disease. Al-Mustafa wal-Murtaza wa-Banahuma wal-Fatima. This li khamsatun refers to al-Mustafa, al-Murtaza, wa Abnahuma, wal-Fatima. And this is not only common among uh, Shias. So yes, whatever is required as far as, you know, uh, advice from the medical experts are concerned is very important. It should be done. And, uh, but of course, our duas are there. And for us, Panjitan are the wasila for the acceptance of our dua.